Japanese company iSpace mits its shot to become the first private company to land a spacecraft on the moon. The company says flight controllers lost contact with their spacecraft moments before it planned its touchdown and now presume it to be lost. For more on this and other space-related news, let's bring in Bill Harwood. He's with us now from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Uh, Bill, it's good to see you. Um, so what happened? <laughs> That's a really good question. You know, everybody was really pulling for this spacecraft to, to get down to the surface successfully. It would have been uh, the first commercially built spacecraft to ever successfully land uh, on another world, in this case the moon. Uh, but as you said, it was during its final descent. Uh, something went wrong and they lost contact literally seconds before it should have touched down. Uh, and then the company reported late in the day that it appeared... They were really low on fuel, and then the telemetry indicated it suddenly started speeding up, which would lead you to believe it ran out of gas, uh, and then gravity took over and it hit the ground hard. It's, it's not clear if it was just a hard landing and it's sitting there on the moon disabled in some way, or if it hit hard enough to destroy the spacecraft. We just don't know yet. Um, so this was even this is sort of news to me because I haven't been paying attention to Japanese space exploration. But can you just give us sort of a bit of a snapshot? as to where Japan is when it comes to space? Oh, sure. You know, they're a major player. You know, the biggest lab module on the International Space Station was built by Japan. Uh, they launched cargo to the International Space Station with their own rockets, uh, and they've had uh, multiple probes go out of the deep space, one collecting, you know, studying asteroids and things like that. So uh, they're, they're serious players in the international space world, uh, but that's that's all government directed. This one was a private company that raised the money uh, through investment uh, to try to see if they could get a spacecraft on the surface of the moon. And their long range plan is to help build an infrastructure, sort of an economy on the moon. In other words, have a way to quickly deliver, you know, uh, co commercial experiments, uh, academic uh, projects, things like that to the moon to gather data in concert with NASA's Artemis Moon Program. So they have very high ambitions, and it's a, it's a real shame uh, this first one didn't work, but they're going to try again. They have two more missions in the pipeline, and hopefully they're going to be successful. Uh, the Chinese Mars rover has entered into hibernation. Uh, what happens now? You know, that's another good question, Vlad. <laughs> Hard to answer. But, you know, the thing about Mars is... Uh, you get dust storms on Mars, and if you're a solar-powered spacecraft like the Chinese rover, that dust can build up on the solar cells. It doesn't get enough power to operate, and that's the case here. In May, it went into hibernation. That's a, an electronic form of, of hibernation, if you will, where the computer realizes it doesn't have enough power to perform all its chores, so it pretty much shuts everything down and just sits there and says and waits until to see if we can maybe build some power back up, recharge the batteries. Occasionally, wind will blow off the solar arrays and, and clear it off enough to recharge those batteries and a spacecraft will wake up. But sometimes it doesn't. You know, NASA's InSight lander died last year because of dust on its solar arrays. The Spirit and Opportunity rovers, one got stuck in a sand drift. Another one got stuck in a sandstorm, kind of like the one we're talking about here, and eventually died. So it, it's a common threat uh, to solar-powered spacecraft on Mars. It's just, it's just one of those things you have to deal with. So, Bill, whenever you're here, I always learn something new, and I can't believe I didn't, like, learn this in, like, fourth grade when we were learning about the planets. But Mars has two moons. I did not know that. Uh, and we have new images now of those moons. Yeah, they're really spectacular. You know, the United Arab Emirates launched their HOPE probe uh, to Mars. It's been in orbit for quite a while, and it's studying the atmosphere. It's trying to understand the relationship between the uh, high-altitude atmosphere on Mars and lower down to learn more about the planet and how it how it works. Uh, but in this case, they're in an orbit now that allows them to fly very close to the moon Deimos. Uh, that's one of those two moons. And, you know, up to this point, astronomers had thought these two little moons were captured asteroids, you know, that somehow got trapped by the Martian gravity and they've been there since. Mm -hmm. uh, but the data from uh, this mission, the HOPE mission, uh, indicates that that, that that might not be the correct hypothesis. These may have a more planetary origin. Uh, we just don't know yet. That's another one where you're going to have to have more data. But, you know, that, that's the science data. That picture is absolutely spectacular. Yeah. When you see this, this little moon suspended above the red planet, it's, it's really gorgeous to look at. So, Bill, this might be a dumb, dumb question, but what is the difference between a moon that is, you know, part of our orbit and a really big rock that is locked in our orbit? 
That's a good question. Uh, you know, when you think about Earth's moon, the, the thinking is that Earth got hit by a planetary-sized body billions of years ago that knocked a huge chunk of debris out there that ended up coalescing and uh, forming what we see today as our moon. Mm. In, in the case of Mars, you know, it's been thought that these were asteroids. You know, and the, uh, you know the, the solar system has lots of these sorts of rocks. This is a very small moon. Deimos is only a couple of uh, kilometers across. Uh, and it's shaped really weirdly, you know. It's kind of hard to imagine how it, it, it ended up with that shape. So all good questions. Uh, <laughs> when you get your astrophysics degree and can explain <laughs> it to me, let me know, okay? Yeah, that ain't happening anytime <laughs> soon, Bill. I'm just too tired. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>